All right, so in this video, we'll have an insight into the supposedly biggest desire of every co-op player, which is to have easier lobbies. But do they really want that? We'll probably have to define easier lobbies, but we'll do that later. First of all, let's jump into the video. All right, so before I start this, keep in mind, if Jgod really answers the question of why players really want to have easier lobbies. All right, here we go. Jgod, please enlighten us. Skill-based matchmaking is everywhere in gaming, but no other community seems to push back harder than the Call of Duty community. Today, we're going to be uncovering why Call of Duty players dream of easier lobbies. While some think that this is a new thing because SBMM changes in Modern Warfare 2019, it's actually been around since the game started. Just like with meta loadouts, players have developed new and better ways to get easier matches as SBMM has changed over time. And by the end of this, you'll see how much wanting easier lobbies is a core part of Call of Duty. New oh, players yeah. or those from other games might wonder why some Call of Duty players want easier lobbies instead of facing fun, right? <laughs> others of the same skill level. The reason is deeply rooted in Call of Duty's history, where players have been rewarded with things like streaks and nukes for high kill games. This has made the desire for easier lobbies a key part of the game. For example, COD even referenced this with Christmas Noobs in its message of the day back in Black Ops 2. Players have always wanted to reach those highs and easier lobbies are a shortcut to get there. However, how well these methods work can depend on your skill level. Less skilled players might not see it as much of a benefit. Over the years, players have used different methods to find easier lobbies and some of these methods work better than others. For example, playing off peak hours when fewer players are online or removing downloadable content map packs before they became free were common tactics. According to Jack Frag's video from January 2021, playing in off peak hours still works relatively well. Okay, so that's interesting. Actually, I'm playing like if I stream, I play mostly in these off stream hours, like from 8 a.m., sometimes even earlier to noon. And for me, it doesn't wear out. <laughs> well, another widely used method was lobby shopping, where players okay, so we're look into at visible methods details right now, right? about the lobby to guess its difficulty. May get easier lobbies. This means checking players' ranks, but in some Call of Duty games, you could even see players' win loss ratio, KD stats, to help better make that decision. Alie shows what it looked like right here from oh, this you could gameplay do that. from BO3. I didn't know that. And Swag demonstrates it here in Infinite Warfare oh, while you. he's playing with Mark of J. If a lobby seems too tough, you can quickly leave and join a new one. If there are only one or two skilled players, they might leave if you start winning a lot. I even covered this back in Black Ops 4. Until around 2019, when Activision decided to make it so that lobbies disbanded after a match. And I think this is part of their countermeasures to reduce the ability to get easier lobbies. Before mm -hmm. dedicated servers were introduced to Call of Duty around 2013, players were forced to play on peer-to-peer -peer connections. And this generally gave the host a huge advantage. If you played back then, you know what I mean. But um, some ways around- That is that is actually something we have to keep in mind for later on when we talk about ping and latency, because that's very important when people say dedicated servers and stuff like that. And you know, uh, having a host has disadvantages. On this, we're either mess with the matchmaking or use a router to geofence. And we'll talk a little bit more about geofencing later in the video, since it's kind of made a comeback or at least gained popularity again. In 2019, a video by Sour accidentally sparked new interest in reverse Dude, boosting by showing details from the early access beta. Reverse boosting generally means lowering your stats on purpose to get placed. That wouldn't annoy lobby. me so much even to do that all Sour's the time. video made it popular that people again, even think about how to get easier lobbies years ago, and which you can see do here. things like that. Another it's just similar trick involved man. joining matches with Actually, players it's who not. had low <laughs> Actually, stats to find easier <laughs> lobbies often called session joining. When Warzone came out in 2020, players could access lots of data through websites and API to see things like lobby strength and KD stats. Because many people had connection problems as well, they started trying to figure out how they could fix it and geofencing again became popular. We're gonna start off with what a geofence is. A geofence creates a digital boundary that prevents your game from connecting to servers outside a designated area that you've selected as the player. Why would you geofence? Setting your geofence near your real world location prevents the game from connecting you 
halfway across the Makes country. Sense, right? This proximity is going to ensure that you get a Terms lower ping, yeah. lead to smoother, more go. responsive gameplay. Geofences also don't come without their drawbacks. Limiting your servers that you can connect to may lead to potentially longer wait times or not being able to find a lobby altogether, depending on what part of the world you're in. The API also True. showed that it could help finding easier lobbies, which that was great. But a side effect of this is that a lot of players left those sites believing that they were experts on matchmaking, even though they didn't really understand it as well as they thought. Also around this time, many websites started selling services they often called VPNs, even though they were mostly just services for geofencing. Early in Modern Warfare 2019, players were still focused on reverse boosting and VPNs. Some people had already moved on to another method that we now call two boxing. This method but, is now you know, wide. We're watching this here and, and all that, like the whole time I'm asking myself the question, why would people do this? Cause there's always a cost and, and which leads people, you know, to do things like that, to think about these things. And, this this is the actual problem or the issue that Call of Duty and Activision should have to face and solve in the end with SBM, MUM, whatever it might be, man. I don't know. But this is not up to the players. And everything they do is because of another issue we have in Call of Duty. And that is matchmaking. But we'll get into that, man talked about but there are probably other tactics that are still kept secret by people trying to get easier lobbies two boxing means using a second account or even more to host games for you putting you in easier lobbies this method combines two strategies session joining which we just talked about as well as reverse boosting that's been around for a while this solved one of the biggest problems with reverse boosting which was that it was a lot of work and less effective over time the new SBMM white paper from July 2024 revealed changes that impacted and made our being harder. It currently uses three skilled criteria, total match kills, kill death ratio, oh, yeah. and a new metric have have that measures some kills compared to right? deaths by enemies. The new measure specifically targets the old reverse boosting trick of just blowing yourself up repeatedly. Again, another countermeasure by <laughs> Activision, at least that's my opinion. I wanted to see how much of a difference two boxing made, especially since we don't have the API for data anymore. I had an account that I'd used to test SBMM in Cold War and other CODs, which I worked on with Drifter Sour Exclusive Ace. The Cold War results lean towards differences in ping, bullet registration, time to match, how long you had to wait in queue, and then also overall skill of the opponent. As a comparison to those tests, two boxing was as effective or better than just using a low skilled account. On top of being fairly easy to do, for multiplayer, you just had to join with a low SBMM account. If the lobby was not full, you could join on them using your main account, simply session. Wait, what? That's what two boxing is about? That's how it works? joining in warzone you can join a party with a low skilled account like your friend or another account as host and then they have that account leave the party when the lobby begins to fill up so it's even easier you don't have to session join in my first match i broke my warzone pr for kills going from 19 up to 29 i tried a few more matches just to make sure it wasn't a fluke and even tested Ow. it with other players in different areas on april 27 2024 oh, i hosted shifty. 14 matches for shifty a competitive player and arguably one of the best players in the world when True. it comes to warzone cheater and i knew I know, wasn't man. already two boxing his pr before this test session was 43 kills during the session, he streamed without hiding his screen to show the transparency that we were two boxing and it was clear we were two boxing. Shifty managed to increase his PR three different times. Had nine matches over 43 kills, so breaking his PR in nine out of the 14 matches, his original PR, and held 42 kill average across the 14 matches. With his best match having 63 kills this increases pr significantly while showing that two boxing in fact makes a huge difference that's crazy Many bro. players now openly two box on stream for fun for content creation just to entertain their audiences do troll videos i don't know some people like this while others don't as mentioned earlier seeking easier lobbies is deeply ingrained in call of duty's culture yeah. so this trend is unlikely to change activision will continue to count it's, it's it's not even in call of duty's culture i think that's a like looking for the best way the easiest way is ingrained in every human brain it's not only in call of duty it's everywhere out there 
of these methods, but enforcing rules through their TOS is tough because they can't stop players from teaming up with friends who have lower stats than them. I hope you found this video useful or informative. Thank you for watching as always. Right, man. Yeah, I mean, I love him. I love him. But, you know, do you really think that he answered the question of why? So the reason why people want to have uh, easier lobbies. I mean, he, he, you know, he named some of them like rewards, like streaks and nukes and uh, like for like for entertainment purposes. Um, fair enough. But I think it goes way deeper into it. Right. So. If I ask myself the question, why would I want easier lobbies? Because right now it's busted out there, right? It is. I mean, you can ask yourself, but I think it is. So the reason why I think is just to have a fair chance. Obviously, it's not that easy to answer it in every detail. But for that, we have we might have to dive into the different perspectives here. Like in general, everyone out there loves to shit on a whole lobby, right? It's just true. You, you like to dominate. It's like that is ingrained in human brains. That's what it is. But obviously not everybody can have this. And for that, we have to look for the different perspectives here. Um, I think we have probably three perspectives in Call of Duty and maybe even in gaming in general. First is nowadays the content part. And with that, I mean high kill games. There are streamers out there and content creators Man, I hate streamers. They want to have high kill games because people love to watch it. It's more entertaining. And with that, the streamers and also the viewers, you, me, as the consumers created that whole story about having easier lobbies. The second part is the gaming experience, like the player that only plays a game for the gaming experience. They don't want to master the whole game. They don't want to be the best at the game they just play it for the experience come home from work from school whatever it is just have some hours um, into the game dive into something else that is probably not reality and not related with the problems and they want to have a fair chance just a fair chance with balanced games and then the third part i think are the competitors and they just want to fight the best of the best right they don't care about only shitting on bad players they compete in tournaments and stuff like that. Uh, and you see that out there. These tournaments are going on and they don't have high kill games in that because the best of the best are fighting, fighting against each other, which should be the case in every public lobby. But for reasons it can't be. So the definition of easier lobbies is not like everyone can shit on everybody because that's not going to happen. All right. I think the definition when we talk about easier lobbies is how to even the field. Everyone has a chance to win games or to lose. And this is what I think is the most important part for players to have fun. There's an even field and you have the chance, the actual chance to win the game. Come across a player and he's right around your skill level and you can have the chance to win because nowadays the skill gap seems so wide in every lobby and i think that is the whole issue of call of duty right now and i can already hear these players or read the comments will then get better at the game no it's not the point this is not what what it is about it is so wrong to say that and it is so wrong that that there are people that play the game and need to get better it's not the point the gaming experience itself should be rewarding for the player let me give you an example here look at no matter what sports, you have professional leagues and you have amateur leagues. You have several divisions that cover a certain part of the skill level of the players in there. Yes, you do have good players in every league and bad players in every league. But the, the, the task of the division, the goal of the division is to tighten that skill gap so it's not unfair. All right. And that is what SBMM should supposed to do. But somehow it's just not working to our favors. All right. And EOMM coming into that too. I know, I know. But with that, speaking of covering a certain skill level and having divisions, it just doesn't work properly for Call of Duty. Why? The biggest problem is matchmaking in general and the physical limits of matchmaking, I think. Some people say, Everything should be ping based. Ping is king. Well, do you really find enough players in your skill level that have the same ping, same location as you, and you will find the lobby pretty quick? 
or do you have to wait for half an hour till to join the lobby? Some people say they should be able to turn off crossplay. Same thing. Do you really find enough players then? It's hard to find numbers out there. I think console players, some say 70% uh, of the Call of Duty players are console players and 30% PC players roughly. And some say uh, it's 50-50, half-half. I don't know, but I'm just asking the question here. Do you really find enough players? We don't have the numbers. It's hard to say. And then skill is something else. Do you really find enough players? Just look at the top notch of the players. Let's take metaphor. Do you really find enough players that are roughly around his skill level in his location that have the same latency to build up a whole lobby of over 100 players? I doubt it. And this is a problem. This is where it comes to an issue that is not so easy to solve. And I'm honest with you. I don't have a solution for that, but I think it is up to Activision and Call of Duty to tighten the skill gap with game mechanics. And, it, and everything comes down to accessibility or approachability. If you add different mechanics like Omni Movement or Backpack System, whatever it is, you make the game so much more complicated that it is so much difficult for players that play it on a casual base, and I'm not talking about average player, just casual players, to approach the game in a short amount of time, whereas you have the players that play it every day for eight hours that are just naturally more into the game and can play it on a much higher level. And this is where I think it comes to Call of Duty to tighten the skill gap by taking out complicated things that take a certain amount of time to learn. If you simplify things, you kind of even the field by nature. It has to do with visibility, with audio quality, hearing footsteps. It has to do with simple movement mechanics with simple loot mechanics or um, weapon builds, whatever it is, there are so many aspects of it that you could change to simplify the things so that players that spend only one hour a day have it easier to get to the level of the players that spend eight hours a day. Because like we saw, we can't put these players in one lobby and these players in one lobby. To wrap things up, I think it is a complicated thing here and to uh, loosen it a bit, let's have a look into the comment section. All right, man, I always enjoy that. I don't know about you, man, but uh, I always look into the comments to see what kind of people are there. And I, I already know the goblins are there, bro. They are there. Okay, so let me, okay, so let's just pick this one here. Just jump back into the game after a month of not playing keyboard and mouse. Oh boy, no meta weapons, straight into sweat lobbies. Warzone is unplayable, well, nothing about this game is fun anymore. Yeah, and that is how I probably think a lot of people feel right now, right? It's not fun and it should be fun to everybody. But let me see the replies here. Okay, let, let's take this one here. Lol, what do you expect? What game can you not play for a few months and be good at straight away when you jump back? Get better at the game, bro. There it is. Stop buying all respect. Um, that's not true that this is and this is where SBMM should kick in actually this is where it should tighten the skill gap like I said and it's not about jumping in a game and dominating about everybody like I said it should be it should provide an even feel that's all it's about and see here this one goes I still don't understand the issue with SBMM all my matches are against mostly better players than me it's so rare to find a lobby with mostly my level or lower SBMM is supposed to protect me against those sweats but maybe just so bad that there are not enough bots. <laughs> yeah I don't know about that um so this is what it is man and we don't have to only consider SBMM here we have to consider EUMM too so EUMM is um supposed to give you the expectation of winning a game because i mean it's it's like gambling and this is where it comes from actually if your brain if you as a player expect to win you only expect it you think next game will be better there should be a win the game provides more dopamine and this means you feel much more happy and with that you have a better gaming experience this is where the theory ends um so what does that mean for you? You will lose more matches and you will get into more matches where you probably will lose because this gives you more dopamine than actually winning. It's, it's, it's proven. This is biology. And, and that's probably one of these issues, man. I wonder if this is actually an SBMM issue or the fact that the player base is probably the smallest it has been in a long time. Therefore, the circle of players you are getting in a match up against are increasingly sweatier. Yeah, true. Um, this is what I meant, man, because if you consider the SBMM and what it looks for, like latency, skill level, 
um, connection, whatever it is, and then you have a small player base, it inevitably comes down to you being ending up in a lobby where a lot of good players are because this is a core of a game. The very good players, the sweat players, they are always a core. And, and I witnessed it after the season five update. One and a half weeks after it, I had great games. One week later, poor games. And this is because most of the players just left again after one and a half weeks because they saw everything they wanted to see and they went back to other games or whatever. The core remains and you're still losing again. But anyway, it's complicated and I think there are issues that Activision has to solve and not we as players by reverse boosting two boxing or whatnot. But let me know your opinion down in the comments. I'm pretty curious about what you think. Then also leave a like and subscribe if you like this kind of content and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.